Hey, what's up everyone? So in this video, we are going to talk about Dehancer. Dehancer did reach out to me. They asked me to review their plugin for DaVinci Resolve. I did find the plugin really interesting. As a professional colorist, I have a lot to say about this. I'm sure you're wondering, did I like it? What I recommended, pros and cons. I'm gonna cover all that in this video. So let's jump right in. This intro intentionally left blank. Okay, so first off, one of the first things I wanna say about this review is just that, that it's a review. So I'm not gonna be demoing Dehancer. I am going to be showing, you know, a little bit of a before and after. You are gonna kind of see what it does, but this is mainly a review about the product. My thoughts on it, is it worth it? How does it compare to DaVinci Resolve? Okay, so I just wanted to get that out of the way. So one thing I wanna say is how I chose to approach this review. So I'm basically breaking it down into four different categories. What is the answer? Second one is who is it for? Third one is, is it any good? And then the last one is, would I recommend it? But before you jump to the end and try to see what my final thoughts are on it, I will say that this is a bit of a you know interesting review in that you kind of have to watch it hear what i have to say for my final thoughts and my final recommendation to make any sense so with that being said let's jump into the first one okay so what is dehancer dehancer is a plugin that works for davinci resolve it works for premiere and final cut pro it simply makes your footage look like real film it applies real 35 millimeter film characteristics. It's got over 60 different film stocks from Kodak to Fuji, and it lets you make tons of adjustments to your footage, like adding halation, bloom, uh, adding film compression, film toning, adjusting the colors, the shadows, the midtones, the highlights, and it is a very powerful plugin. Now, does that mean that you can just apply this to your footage and it'll look great and then it pretty much color corrects your footage for you? No, you still have to put in the work, you still have to match your shots, you still have to do some color correction um, so that all your footage looks great, so it all matches. Okay, so next, who is this plugin for? I would say that generally this plugin is for filmmakers, editors, DPs, and really anyone who wants to make their footage look good very quickly with a little bit of minimal work. Is it gonna make your workflow any faster? No, I'll get to that in a second. But really, I would say overall for filmmakers, also for colorists to a degree. And so on to the next one though is, is it any good? I honestly think Dehancer is awesome. I absolutely loved it. Up to this point, I actually used it on four real world projects. I used it on a film that I had previously graded, um, which interestingly enough, this project was designed for something like the Hunter, where the filmmaker, the client simply said, I want my movie to look like film. That was their main uh, feedback is they just, they want to look accurately like film. And so I then, regraded that using Dehancer and then I compared it to my own footage and you know to see the differences you know what a I could do with the footage versus what Dehancer could do with the footage. I of course learned a lot from testing it on that kind of project and then I also used it on a music video. I then also used it for some classes that I do for Skillshare footage pretty much just like this and then I of course played with it with all different kinds of footage. Um, all different kinds of formats from red footage to ProRes footage to H.264, H.265 and really saw what this plugin could do. Um, and I have to say that it's absolutely great. It is, you know, one of the most accurate uh, plugins for making your film look just like real film. So for the film lovers out there, you're going to be very happy with it. If anything, I would say it makes your footage look too much like film and some people will find themselves dialing back the adjustments and the look more than adding it on just because so many people are used to things being sharp, crisp, and this just makes it look so much like film that, you know, you probably won't want to apply it at a 100% level. But besides that, I love that you can adjust all kinds of different traits that most other plugins can't do. I love that you can apply things like, you know, you can adjust the bloom, the bloom looks really great and organic. 
the halation looks great. I love that you can apply things like the different, you know, print stocks, Kodak and Fuji. I love the film compression adjustment where you can make your highlights look very natural and just like film. And there's just a ton of different, you know, fine tuning that you can do to really dial in and make your footage look great. Okay, and so answering the question, is it any good? Um, definitely yes. But now on to the not so good stuff. My biggest complaint about Dehancer is simply the price. This plugin is just flat out not worth $399. Hey, what's up? I'm just gonna cut in here, taking a break. And of course, in the middle of editing, uh, a new version of Dehancer comes out, version seven. Uh, when I started editing, uh, it was only $3.99 and now it's $4.49. So basically anywhere where I say $3.99, remember that it's $4.49. So let's keep going. Uh, when you can get DaVinci Resolve, the studio version for $299 and it can do almost everything that Dehancer can do, then I really don't know why you would get this plugin. However, I'm not saying to not buy it. I'm not saying that it's not for you. The answer is a little bit complicated and I have to say that I probably do have a lot of bias as a colorist. And that is simply because I know DaVinci Resolve inside and out, I know it very well, and I know that Resolve can do, I think almost everything this plugin can do, and you get all of that plus DaVinci Resolve Studio for $100 less. So for me, it's a no-brainer, but I do know that a lot of people aren't professional colorists, and I know that a lot of people don't wanna take the time to and learn DaVinci Resolve to make their footage look just like film, which this plugin can do very quickly. Um, so there's where things get a little bit interesting and a little bit more complicated. Um, I, don't, I would say this is not for everyone. If you have Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro, then it's probably for you because those programs don't have all of the control that DaVinci Resolve has. Um, in that case, it might be worth $399, but then again, I would say just switch to DaVinci Resolve so you can see where I'm coming from. Um, also, I did do some comparison of like the halation in Resolve compared to the halation in Dehancer and the, did the same thing for Bloom and I did the same thing for the Film Green and a few other features. And I have to say, as good as Dehancer is, DaVinci Resolve had more adjustments and more fine-tuned adjustments. So it's gonna sound like I'm talking bad about Dehancer because personally, now that I have it, now that you know it's on my system, it's on my Mac Studio and it's on my MacBook Pro, I'm going to use it. I'm probably gonna use it on every project I work on, almost every project I work on, and I do really like it. So if I were to give any feedback about the plugin, it would be directly to the company Dehancer, and I would say, lower the price, it has to be cheaper than DaVinci Resolve Studio version. And if that were the case, I would say this is awesome. I would recommend it for absolutely everyone um, because $400, is just not worth it. So now onto the other big con from the plugin. And that is that it's a huge drain on your system. I have a pretty upgraded Mac Studio and I have to say that this, you know, performed pretty well with that. Um, until I added grain and once I added grain, I mean it just ground to a halt to where it was just like not very useful, not very functional. Um, the way I'm going to plan on probably using it is I'm just going to have to leave the grain off, which is kind of annoying, and just work and then at the very end turn it on. But then because I work with clients, it's annoying that, you know, clients want to see it play back with grain, but the plugin is too much of a drain on the system and I work off solid state drives. I have the Mac Studio, so it really is the plugin that just drains the system. Now, I do understand that it's because it's so nice and so accurate and it makes the grain look so real and so good. That's why it's draining the system, but they just have to work something out so that it plays back a little bit smoother. I also tested this and tried this out with my MacBook Pro. I have a 13 inch MacBook Pro, an M1 with 16 gigs of RAM, it obviously didn't perform as well as the Mac Studio. I found even without grain, when you added certain uh, adjustments to it, um, things like I think the halation and the bloom, 
it just really, you know, that was not very useful. I feel like if you had like a MacBook Pro, you definitely in Resolve would have to have things like the render cache on because it just would not play back smoothly. Um, unless you just do very subtle adjustments, you're gonna need a faster system to run this. And then when I compared some of the things that Resolve does, like the grain and the halation and a few other things, it ran back and played back smoothly in Resolve. And so I kept kind of going back to what Resolve can do compared to what the hand could do and the fact that it was more expensive and thinking that if it, you know, drains your system this much, um, it also will be pretty hard for a lot of people to use. And I imagine that a lot of the people who would probably benefit from this the most um, which are the people that may not know color correction as well or resolve as well and just want to apply the plugin and do the work and make their footage look good those people may have slower computers than say a professional colorist or a professional dp or someone who might know their vinci resolve a little bit better so it was this kind of thing that didn't make sense um, so the pricing just throws everything out of whack and then that paired up with the um, performance drain on your system two huge cons that I think they really need to take care of which really sucks because I really do like the plugin a lot hey just cutting in again to say that I also have downloaded and used the new version version 7 um, it's got the film damage upgrade which is actually pretty cool it's very very accurate um, also, as far as one of the new things they added is performance updates. I actually tested it and compared it to version 6, certain things I was doing, certain um, adjustments that I was making. And the adjustments, the performance boost is very, very minor. If I was getting, say, 11 frames per second playback and resolve, I'm now maybe getting 12 to 13. So there was a little bit of an update there but not very significant, honestly. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say, so uh, let's keep moving. So with everything I've said so far, all the pros, and there are a lot of pros and all of the cons, would I recommend this? I would recommend it for people who have $400 they can spare, maybe small companies, maybe like a small production company, people who have 400 bucks and want their footage to look good, who they wanna add a very unique look to their footage, then yes, I would recommend it to them and also for people who have a fast system. Another group I would recommend this to is people who use Premiere and people who use Final Cut Pro 10 um, because like I said before, those programs don't have all the tools that DaVinci Resolve has. So for you, it'll be a huge upgrade in what those programs can do. If you have DaVinci Resolve, it depends on your experience level and it depends how much you know about color grading and color correction. So you can see a pattern emerging here uh, revolving around those two big cons. So I know this review was very mixed. Hopefully, you know, they listen to this review and I have a feeling they will. But overall, I'd say I love it. I recommend it, but maybe wait for the price to go down or if you can afford it, buy it because you will love it if you do have it. Okay, so again, I just wanna wrap up with saying that, you know, they let me use this. They said to give my honest review, my honest opinion on it. I think I've done that. And if you are one of those people who do choose to purchase it, feel free to use the affiliate link below. If you have any questions or comments, leave those below as well. I'm also thinking of doing another video on how to use Dehancer, how to make your footage look cinematic, how to use it properly. So hopefully you got something out of this. Also like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all later.